wisdom and thank you for the wisdom that was speaking to my mind even some thoughts there that I didn't receive and I appreciate it God talked to my inner mind my subconscious mind the mind that speaks the mind that understands cleanse my flesh wash me bathe me sanctify me and I'll praise you by the blood of the Lamb Help me to bear the cross. Amen. The Bible said the wisdom is justified. So we're cheering. I want to go back here to verse 1. And the fifth angel, that's the fifth trump angel. And I think that in my mind that This has to be Michael. Because Michael, I studied up on Michael last night. Michael, the Michael angel, Michael angel, he's the one that watches over the earth and watches over the God-fearing people. And he is the one that Daniel said that in the time of this trouble that he would deliver well, you can see right here, this is a time of trouble, and he is protected. Even though he loosened, he had the key of the bottomless pits. I said he had the key to the bottomless pits. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there come a smoke. And again, you see John is pictured and shaving up his visions, lining all up. All the old prophets that spoke about, maybe they didn't go into detail, about the sun would be turned to darkness. And Joel said there'd be thick cloudiness. Well, Joel went on to speak about the locusts. We'll get into that. And so, you can see John, he's not just alone in this. No doubt in my mind, he must have had all the scrolls of these uh, over 300 times that prophets had spoke about this day. This great day of tribulation, which is called the day of the Lord. The day of trouble. The day of the Lord is not a day of joy. Oh, why anybody wants to even teach it? Well, these preachers have told us more than the day of the Lord Jesus going to come and snatch us out. They made us think the day of the Lord was when Jesus comes in cloud. Heaven. If that be so, we'd all be rejoicing be a day of joy. But he said it's not a day of happiness and of joy. But it's a day of darkness. I want to go to uh, Revelations 11 and 7 and when they shall have finished their testimony talking about the two prophets the beast that ascend out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. I want to deal on this bottomless pit thing for a moment. Here, but I want to give a scripture. I want to go get Revelation as a point. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit. No doubt this angel is the same angel 
even though he has already have uh, <clears throat> Jerusalem, the Pharisee, but here he has the same key that the fifth seal angel that I think could be and there's a Michael and you'll see again here that he is looking after the saints because he's here he's going to bind the devil and bless the saints let him reign see what I'm talking about opening but here he opens hell Instead of letting Satan out, he takes him and puts him in. I saw an angel come down from heaven and to kill the body and spit him. A great chain in his hand and he that laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, Satan, and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottom of his pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should to see the nations no more to the thousand years to be fulfilled and afterwards to be loosened just a little while. Now the bottomless pits is under the earth and the ocean. You'll see that here in a moment. The bottomless pits is under the ocean and under the earth. And it's a place where the fallen angels can see some him. One thing about God, He's got an altar. I don't know what about these churches. God has an altar. Always saw the altar. No prophets went into visions now, that saw God. It was, they saw the altar. All of God holding in. When he met God, the first thing they done was build an altar. You people that haven't got an altar don't understand you. Somebody said, well, I just, no, I ain't that simple. We need an altar. And this is an altar. This ain't a couch. This ain't a bed. I've got an altar put in my bed. It ain't a place I sleep. The bed may be it's soft, it's, it's soft to put your elbows to lean on. But that altar is a place that God recognizes. And he said, smite the crossbar of the door that the post may shake and cut them in the hate or break it in two, and all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword, and he that flees of them shall not flee away, he that escapes of them shall not be delivered. Though they dig into hell, there shall my hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, there will I bring them down. Well, you know that's what they're doing now. They're singing up into the heavens. And they're drilling down into the earth. Trying to see what hell is. Scientists is doing exactly. And though they hide themselves in the top of carnival, I will search them and take them out from there. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea. There will I command the serpent, and he shall bite me. So you can see that the bottom of the sea is not the bottom of the sea we know, but it's the, the bottom of the pit that's under the bottom of the sea where Satan, the old serpent is, So the bottom of this pit is no place you want to go to. 
But if you worship the beast, that's where you're going to wind up with him. And though they go into captivity before the enemies, there will I command the sword and it shall slay them. I will set my eyes upon them for evil, not for good. And the Lord of hosts, he is he that touches the land, and it shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn, and it shall rise up holy like a flood, and shall be drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And be drowned by the flood of Egypt. I want to go to Isaiah 24. And I'll start at 19. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved, it's seen. You know, you don't even know. He's getting this book of Revelation. John opens this whole thing up. All these prophets had this word all the time, but John put it all together. In the book of Revelations. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drop. It shall be moved like a cottage, and the transgressors thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. Right now the weakening of the earth is getting heavy. And God is fixing his poor the part of his spirit, a evil of nature, and a demonic. We're fixing to talk about a demonic locust. A demonic locust. Who gave you that to me? Any that book I was reading last night, that uh, volume one, the small book, peak looking book. Hurry up. I want to talk about these locusts. I got a whole history on locusts. I'm going to read you about locusts. And I meant to bring it. And he'll bring the wrong book. <laughs> and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are our own high. So you high muckers, you look what John said. The chief captains, the king, the great one. Ain't nobody gonna check this. You better fear God and keep his commandments. If I had a message for the world, it would be let's come to the conclusion of the whole matter. Let's fear God. Keep his commandments, deny ourselves, and take up the call. And believe in everything that Jesus Christ has told us. The high ones, the king of the earth, upon the earth. See what John said, the great kingdom, the big shots. And the big shots think money is going to tend to it all. This is the time I read to you that I was gold and silver and being a smart aleck and a big shot and a little prince, a little princess, a prince, ain't going to help nobody. You're going to need God. We're going to see the opening of the body of the spirit here out of the field truck. And we're going to be invaded from hell. The ordinary locusts, when they're ordered to attack, 
It's just to eat up the grass or trees. But the demonic locust is commanded not to do this. So you see, this ain't bombs. This ain't war weapons. The called war weapons kill people. These can't kill people. I've heard all these experts and big shots explain all of this. You try to pick it. Pick pieces of it and understand it. That's the way it is. Okay, okay two. Is it right here? Thank God he got the right one. <laughs> you want to read some history. There's some words here I wish that I might get Mother Crawford out to face this book. <laughs> Listen. The kings of the earth and of all the earth, they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit. Shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days, they shall be missed. Then the moon shall be confounded, and the sun ashamed. For the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem before his anxious, or before the anxious and his glorious. Oh, ain't that great? Boy, this is just before that great rain of the rain. Can't you see it? God's going to do this. Now before that thousand years of the millennium. You know how the devil will be put up with you. see where Satan is put? God said he's going to put him in the pit. The bottomless pit is a place of punishment for all great ones. They're cast into prison and they help as the angels. I'll see if I can't find that in Peter, but it's not really necessary. You know, I've quoted it. Uh, I've quoted it with the angels was help in prison. Well, here it is. The heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept and stored and reserved unto fire against the day of judgment of ungodly Men, and beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. He's not slack. And saying his promise that some men count slackness. I want you to go back with me now to Revelations. I'm not Get into that. I do not get my. So I've got more scripture here to deal with. But I want you to know there in Peter. Peter was telling about the angels that lost their first estate, was cast into this place of prison. Hell. To the day of judgment. And when the angels in the time of Adam, I mean Noah, seen these beautiful women, they went down and took them wives and had intercourse with them. And then these giants, not these demonic generation, was born. And these angels, God was not pleased with, and he cast them into this place of the bottomless pits to hold in. For God was very angry with the angels that wanted to be married and to take these beautiful women. God cast them into that place of Bottomless pits. Well, now, what I'm showing you here this bottom bit, all these evil powers, God is opening. And they're fixing to be an invasion from hell. And the bottomless pit, verse 2, he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the bottomless pits. And as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air was darkened by reading out the smoke of the pit.
And I want to take about five minutes on this, go to Joel. Two. A day of darkness, a blueness, a day of clouds, and a thick darkness as the morning spread up on the mountain, and a great evil, a strong that has not been over the light, neither shall be any more added even to the years of many generations. Said here in verse 10, the earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, the stars. All of this is going to happen here during the time of this opening of the bottomless pit. And God's view during this time is going to be seen, the faithful, the overcoming. But we couldn't go through it. There came out of the smoke. Locusts upon the earth unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now when he opened the bottom of his pit, there came locusts upon the earth. Demonic locusts. They're devastating. Terror. It is incredible from the bottomless pits that come. These are the most incredible creatures that man will have ever looked upon. And I want to see if I can read uh, about some of these locusts, about some of these. It's given a reason of history here. The locusts breed in desert places and invade vegetation, lands, or food. They may even be about two inches in length with a wing span of about four to five inches. They may belong to the same family as the household cricket or the grasshopper. They travel in a colony in a hundred feet diameter or as much as four miles long. When such a cloud of locusts appear, it is if there had been an eclipse of the sun. And even the great buildings less than two hundred feet away can be seen, cannot be seen. The destruction they cause is beyond belief. When they have Left an area, not a blade of grass is to be seen. And the trees are stripped of their bark. Land where the locusts have settled looks as if it had been scorched with a brush fire. Not one single living thing is left. Their destruction can be best advertised on the fact that it is recorded in eight. 66, the plague of locusts invaded. This is a place in Africa. And so total Algeria. And so total was the destruction, which they caused that 200,000 people perished of famine in the days which followed because they wiped it out. 200,000 people because they wiped it out with no food left. That's how. Just a regular, ordinary locust. I hope you don't mind me doing this. The noise of the millions of their wings is described as like the dashing of waters in a mill wheel or the sound of a great caterpillar. When the millions of them settle on the ground, the sound of their eating has been described as the cracking of a forever farm. The sound of them on the march is like having rain fall on a distant forest. 
And it's, it's always has been, notice that the head of the locust is like the maturing head of a horse. For that reason, the Italian word for locust is cultivated and the German uh, call them horses. And when they move, they move in an extraordinary like an army with leaders. People have dug trenches, lit fires, even fire cannons in an attempt to stop them, but without success. They come on in a steady column, which climb hills, enter houses, and leave scorched earth behind. There is no destruction visible in the world than the visitation of locusts. This is a terrible disaster which John sees all the drummer locusts from the pits, the demonic locusts from the pits here. Now, I'm reading about natural, but the demonic locusts is going to be so much more beyond. You know, you would think that you was reading that John was losing an army, but it's not an army, it's an army of locusts. I'm there. No. Give Trump. I believe I know what they read. Man, there's some more here. They got a, so much about this. How the, the ordinary locust is devastating the vegetation, but not human. It being, but the demonic locust is have so shaped man. I'm telling you, I'll put that right there. I might get back to it. I want to go into the scripture here. I'll describe to you about the natural locusts. Now I want to get into the, the demonic locusts. Listen now. There came out of the bottomless pit locusts upon the earth. This is not an ordinary locust. Because you heard how the ordinary locusts just wipe out the land. I even got some more history here where they went through Europe and they sound like trains. Sound like uh, just uh, horses running. There came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and the demons given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, over in Europe and over in the deserts, where John was at, was used to, the scorpion was about two to three and four, and even sometimes was as much as nine inches. And when people pitch in their tents, they have to dig in the sand because they, when anything, they get under rocks. You just can't go out and look at a clean spot thing that's clean because they're high. And they say, you ever had them get in your house and didn't know how to get in them little bitty ones? Well, they look like them little bitty ones got that stinger. But the desert scorpion and the scorpion of that part of the world are two and three and high as nine inches. And they're not fatal in most cases. Some people die, but they torment you. It's always torment for one to see you. Then you get one down your back and you've got to hunt a bathroom, a place to get your clothes off quick. Man, you just about won't be so modest, thing. Man, you be hacking your leg up, pulling your britches down. I mean, right quick. When you, see, you ever had one get your britches? I had a suit hanging in the closet a good while a while back. And I put it on. And I kept feeling something steaming a little. Man, I got it. The brain wouldn't arrest and I felt the man. I jumped up out of bed in that dress as fast as I could, like a crazy man. Yanked my britches down the time I got into the door shut. Now the thing was right there. Man, it was tormenting me. Then he lifts up the red streak all the way up. And it stung for several hours. Well, God has created these little fellows that hide everywhere. And in dry weather is when they work. And they crawl out. And in droughts, well, there's going to be plenty of this. 
But now, God is opening up hell and letting a locust come up and giving them stingers in the tails like scorpions. I mean, real demonic creatures. They're commanded not to kill. They're not like the ordinary locusts to clean the field off. They've given charge not to do anything because they're demonic. They don't have to eat up everything in the country. Because they're demons. They come out of hell. They come out of the furnace. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the ground. of the earth. Neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men. I want to make this as hard as I can because then it's going to be hard enough. This makes you want to get sealed. This makes you want to keep the commandments having what it takes to be. And that's why we're not doing right. We're not telling the folks this is coming. What about all these people that don't know that this is coming? What about these churches that mess around don't pray and don't fast and don't deny themselves. If a pastor don't keep his people the best time of dedication and the best time of taking up the cross and the best time of sold out religion and faith religion and overcoming religion and dedicated religion, he's doing them wrong. Because it's going to take the best to be seen. And you folks that is not seeking God, you're harming yourself. You're harming yourself. I want to go to Joel. Joel chapter 1. Now there's four stages to the ordinary locals. Four stages to the ordinary locals. And I'm going to show you the stages of demon locusts. Four stages of the ordinary locusts. When they get in their locust form, their life is five months. I have that here in the history of locusts. I studied locusts to get the picture with John about the demonic locusts because he describes it as the same thing, but it's demonic. You'll find out when we get down to the sixth seal about a demonic cavalry. There's 200 million army that's going to attack the earth is a demonic cavalry. It's not an all earth cavalry. You can't find it. You're going to have to have God. Weapons ain't going to fight this war. This is a war, Brother Dawson, between the devil and God putting down evil between the, the evil and good. This is when it lasts good and evil. It's going to win out. But it's going to be good. Righteousness is going to win out. God told me years ago, said stick to holiness. Stick to righteousness. Because righteousness and holiness is going to come out on top. I ain't going to believe in what I'm believing. I'm going to stand steadfast in what I believe. I get strong in what I believe. Because good is going to come out over evil. Good and evil is in the battle here. But now God got the upper hand. God never changes. Listen to Joel. He said, tell your children, hear this, O you old men. Give her all your habitation of the land. Have this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers, tell you your children of it. Let your children tell their children children another generation that which the palm of worm has left. First, the locust is in the form of a big palm of worm. 
That's his first body. He has four stages of his body. The natural locus. That's right. The pommel one. He crawls everywhere. Has left the locust is eaten. That which the locust has left, the canker worm. Next, the locust is a canker worm. That which the canker worm have enough, how the pommel worm. You know, the pommel worm is like the old army worm. Man, when he gets in a grass field or a hay field, I mean, it just, and it's, they, all, they all got that cut. Cotton bill, they cut them down. You can't believe uh, that a uh, uh, swarm of these things will wipe out a hundred acre field overnight. And then he gets in his grasshopper stage. He wakes in you drunk, weep and howl all you drink the wine because of the new wine where it is cut all from your mouth. For a nation has come up on my land strong without number whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. He has the cheek teeth of a great lion. He has laid my vine waste, bought my fig trees. He has made it clean and bare and cast it away and the branches of it are made white. Can't you see where John is getting his information? I want to read one verse. See, the shoe goes on the other foot now. We're moving close to the greatest thing that the world's ever had. We're picking some big thing now. I've been saying this for months. Some big, some great. Listen to verse 25 of the next chapter. I will restore to you the years that the locusts has eaten the canker worm, the caterpillar, the purple worm, my army which I've set among you. It was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their forehead. And to them it was given that they should not kill them. These couldn't be war weapons because you can't train a war weapon to strike a man and not kill him. There ain't no way you can have these flaming torches from these uh, flame doors and all these, they may look like an animal, they may look like a locust. This is a demonic thing. We may have believed otherwise, but I don't believe that way anymore. This is demonic. Only those men which have not got their night in this temple, that's in your bodies, have it on, having your robes made white. You better listen. Who are these? These are they that came out of great tribulation. Washed their robes. Made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Served them day and night. They'll hunger no more. Neither thirst anymore. The sun, later you'll see as the seven plagues of the seven last angels, the sun Scorches men that men that the sun can't scorch. These has got the seal of God. As God wipes out food and bring worldwide payment and drops, we do what we can do now. But what we can't do, faithfulness to God, and here these locusts was commanded not to hurt. Those that see in their forehead. This is a time that me and you ought to seek God for seeing. God's people. 
You know, when God kept the children of Israel in Egypt, in the 12th chapter of Exodus, when it seen the locusts and the evil that come on in and not on the children of God, the camps of Negotian was kept. No cows, the sun shined with them. The waters, no hell, no locusts, no evil. Finally, the Egyptians said, get them out of here. Hastily get them out of here. They went in and said, we want to go. We want to be paid for all this 400 years. Fill our vessels. We work for you for nothing. We've been your slave and now we won't pay for it. Thank God Egypt had to pay up. They filled their bags of gold and filled their bags of silver. All the gold and silver and the precious things. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise God. When they left, they left with silver, with gold. No sickness, no plague. This is the type. This is what John is lining up his vision of the locusts and the plague that was on Egypt. That's the seal of God. And to them it was given that they should not kill them. Only those men which shall not know the seal of God will go ahead. To them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. That's the length of the ordinary locust. Their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. Demonic locusts commanded to hurt not the land, but to attack man. And the wicked attack. The faithful, the seal of God, the blood wash, the robes, the ones that's wearing the unspotted robes. The robes have been made white in the blood. The ones that served him day and night. That's a servant. Yes. Hey, you serve him day and night. Some of you ain't serving him night. You don't want to help. Feed yes. yes. your guts. Yes. You don't study, you don't pray. You go home and do all your pleasures. Yes. It's time to take up the cross and start serving God. You better get out of the natural and try to get into supernatural. You're going to need it. But these things are in hand. Listen to this. In those days, men shall seek death. Let's go to Job. While I'm here in Job, I'll just Read uh, all I got in Job. Listen. Job 3, 21. Which longs for death, but it comes not. Digs for it more than for hiding treasures. Which rejoice exceedingly and are glad when they can find the grave. You hear it? Job said, you're going on to die. You're going to be put in the grave. You don't want to die in the camp. 26 and 6. Hell is naked before him. Destruction has no cover. Death is not going to hide you now. 28 and 22. Destruction and death says, We have heard the fame thereof with our ears. Man, death didn't hide it. Dying didn't get you out of it because you can't die. These attacked and locusts just because you ain't Christian. You broke the commandments of God. You wouldn't serve Jesus. You wouldn't deny yourself. You wouldn't pay the price. You didn't want to be what God wanted you to be. You don't want to follow what God wanted you to follow. You wanted your own praise. You wanted what you wanted in life and not what God wants in life. You wanted your kind of family, not the kind of family God wanted you. Some of these preachers don't want dedicated, sold out women to go with them everywhere they go. They want a little prissy. Some of these 
these men don't want a dedicated, sold-out woman. They want somebody for their own place, not to serve God with them. You got to serve God together. Some of you, you, you don't want a family to, for God. You want to raise a family for your own descendants. To give you all, to, to make your will out to. You don't want, that's right, you know what? You don't want kids for your own, for God. You want to raise them and leave a bunch of them behind. Leave all your treasures to them. But God said, you've got children, you should want children to live and to be God's vessels. Raise them for God. Don't worry about earthly treasures. I want to go to Proverbs. Fifteen and nine. The way of the wicked is abomination unto the Lord. But he loves him that follows after righteousness. That's his righteousness of the commandments that is fulfilled through Jesus Christ. This is Paul taught in Romans 8. The righteousness of the law is fulfilled through Jesus Christ. Can you do it yourself? Correction is grievous unto him that forsakes the way. He that hates reproof shall die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more than the heart of the children of men. So you can know hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of man is never satisfied. From this right here, and to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he strikes a man. And in those days men shall desire to die and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them, and the shape of the locusts were like unto horses, prepared unto battle. You heard the shape of the natural locusts. Well, the demonic locusts, the same way. It sound like battlefield. Prepared unto battle on their heads were as it were crowns like gold. It said it was gold. The face for the face of men. See, Satan on this army, this demonic locust turned him loose like an army. The hair as the hair of women, the teeth were as the teeth of the lion. You heard Joseph. The breastplate was it was breastplate of iron. Nothing can stop them. The sound of the wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And it's going to be an invasion of the whole earth. Man, that sound alone is going to drive me crazy. They're going to climb in the windows. They're going to enter in like a thief. You ain't going to be able to shut them out because these locusts is commanded to hunt the wicked down. Not kill them. You said, why? Well, I'll go right here and show you why. Look here what happened. And when he had opened the field seal, I saw under the all of the souls of them that were slain by the word of God and by the testimony which they held. They cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord? How long, do, do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? That's the field seal. Now this is the fifth chunk. God said, I've got this hold your peace. A little while rest. Take this robe and run. Now under the fifth trunk, I'm going to take care of it. Now God, the Christians have been tortured. The Christians have been tormented. The Christians, many of them compelled to blaspheme. The Christians, some fell. Paul calls them to blaspheme. Others. Nero. Paul got saved. But the evil men and now the wicked is going to pay everybody 
body that's not sealed is going to be responsible when a man transgresses against the cross and the commandments of God. He's on the devil's side. He sided with the persecutors. You may have never personally laid a hand on anybody, but just because you were the wicked, you're going to pay the price of the wicked. Now these locusts, demonic locusts, is chasing man down. The whole earth has been invaded. Come loose. On this field chop. Sorrow. Troubles. I didn't know it was going to take this long. Their hair is the hair of women. Their teeth were as the teeth of lions. They had breastplates as the breastplates of iron. The sound of the wings were like the chariots of many horses running the battle. They had tails like on the scorpions. I described the natural struggle. There were stingers in their tails. Their power was to hurt men, not kill them. Ain't no war weapon can do this. Man, don't make a war weapon to do this. This ain't a natural army. This ain't Russia. This ain't America with their singers. Singers kill you. You see what they've done to the Iraqis? Burn them up. Burn their heads off. Burn their legs off. These ain't plain doors. My God, these are demons. Demon locusts, loosen against those that's persecuted. God has sealed the saints. God has sealed the vapor. God has sealed the dedicated. He caught them up. That would prove nothing. God right here on the earth has got the church kept by the power of the seal of the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the demons can't hurt them. Hallelujah. I said the demons can't hurt them. Makes me want to sell out to God. I like to suck it all all the way. I don't want to be nothing but a real Christian. I don't want to be nothing but a Jesus father. I don't want to do nothing but serve Jesus day and night. That's the only protection man's going to have. He's going to run in a hole. Ross said they're going to climb in the windows. An invasion. Ain't going to be no place. It's going to be like they said the great David's wrath has come. Hide us for a second place to hide. Great men, never mind. They're going to hurt him five months. Five months. Nothing can stop them. You better get out of business. Just being good ain't enough. Man, he said, Jesus said when he referred to this, Watch and pray, therefore, always. Don't take an always pray. Paul said, day and night. Paul spoke of the evil day. Put on the whole arm of God. Hallelujah. You run around here and do all you things you do. Sit around and talk to for hours and don't pray to. Go off and have your parties and have your Tommy, say in restaurants. Be with people you want to be with when God said I want to be with you. You know what to do. You got people you like more than you like God. You like your friends. You like your husband. You like your wife. You like your children. You like your babies. But God said now I'm going to turn you over and let you like what you want to. Now you're going to pay for it. You better like God above everything. You better sell out to Him. Give God your time. Give God your life. Don't stay with people. Hide yourself. Find God. Find help. Find Jesus. Find the cult. Find the Lord. Watch it. Find the seal. Find the blood. Find the commandments. Walk out of the commandments. Get the pain of Jesus. This is it. We'll probably see this before the 90s. It scares me today. Even then. Sit around here with friends. Talking with everybody. I like to talk too. You better talk to him. 
You spend time with others. You don't spend an hour, two hours a day. It's going to take five and six and seven, eight and nine and ten and twelve hours a day. You're going to wait then to get sealed. You're going to get ready now. You're going to be faithful now. You're going to serve him now. You're not going to wait to that hour and decide to get out of business. You're going to get out now. You're going to be sealed. This is about 12 months after the sealing of the saints. That's how long it is. As the saints have been sealed, this is about from 10 to 12 months after. That this is happening. Man, we need God. You're going to see on the next seal that's open here, it's been 13 months, one hour, and one day. This is right at, this is, the next seal is going to follow behind it. So this has only been about 12 months after the sealing of the saints. And God ain't going to take but about four or five or six months, seven at the most, to seal the saints. So you can pray around here and know, well, I'm going to do something with God in January. I'm going to get out of business in February. I'm going to have next spring. That could be too late. Next spring could be too late. Next spring could be the time that it's already took place. And you're not going to wait on this. You're going to pray now. This is the time. God ain't giving me this message now for to be to die. You can see why 22 years ago he took it away from me. But now it's back. And this message is back. And it's back to get you ready. It's back to show you up. It's back. God had to weed out this ministry. Get out of the paper. Get out of the dedicated. Be true to God. Be true blue. Be sold out. Don't play. Don't drag. Don't drag your feet. Get out of the business. Pick your hearts. Hold yourselves. Wash yourselves. Get sin out of your life. Ain't one sin. You got one sin in your life. If one commandment's being broke, you won't be saved. That's thus said. One sin, one pet sin, one sin you want to do, one sin of neglecting the pray, one sin of neglecting the past, one criticizing sin. You got a Billy Fine spirit in you. You'll not be sealed. If you don't pay your tithes, you won't be sealed. These are going to be commandment keepers. Blood washed, washed, washed. Not one sin in your life. Man. I want to close with this one scripture. Chronicles. First Chronicles 21 and 12. Either three years payment or there are three months to be destroyed before your foe fall that the sword of your enemies overtake you or else three days the sword of the Lord even the peasants in the land the angel of the Lord shall destroy throughout all the coast of Israel. Therefore, advise yourself what word I shall bring again to, to him that sent me. The angel of the Lord. We're going to have to have God. We need to be praying for God to send his angels to talk to them that can hear it. I fell around my bed this morning. I fell all seven of these angels and I know they want to talk to me. You need to be praying for me to get in shape and to talk to me. Somebody got to hear God. Seems like some of y'all ain't going to hear Him. I don't see nobody else even believes what I'm preaching. Ain't nobody else ever preached it. You never heard it. You ain't going to preach it because some of you in your mind, you don't believe this. You can't accept it because demon. Well, you wait till tomorrow as I deal with a demonic Calvary. 
The next seal is going to be the demonic Calvary. It's going to kill a third of the world's population. The next seal is going to be commanded to kill. This seal, this trunk, was commanded not to kill but torment. Now, man is going to be slaughtered and tortured and killed. Well, that's what they've done to us. They killed us. They tortured us. And then went ahead and killed us. Did Millions. Jesus hide this word in the house. Hide in the house, Lord. Seal me. Seal me. Lord, it don't look like you need another meal's bit to sit down and enjoy a meal of pleasure. Any pleasure food unless you going to do something I don't need to eat now. My body's in a critical, dangerous stage. And I need to sit down and eat some good meat and vegetables. But I'm a scared. And I miss the most important thing of my life. What God has prepared for me for the last days. Amen.